All right, guys. So, ah, happy Thursday. Happy Woo Thursday. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, right. Uh, it's Friday Eve. It's very <laughs> well said, in that Very well said. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Uh, today we're going to jump right into the uh, into the commandments. But before we do that, it, does anybody have any questions on anything that we've discussed before, or new questions that? Uh, that you feel that you're struggling with? Uh, anybody? No. Very good. I keep doing a great job. All right. Yeah. All right. So before we get into the uh, the Ten Commandments, I wanna I wanna be able to to make uh, a, a a point before we get into it, and and the point is. That I always leave the Ten Commandments for the the end of the uh, of the curriculum, right? Uh, because it, the commandments are going to require for us to to recognize the changes that we may need to make in our lives. And if you do this at the beginning, uh, people never give God a chance. And, and so when we do it at the end, when, when we've come to know a little bit uh, about God, when we've come to recognize or discover his love for, for each and every one of us, uh, it, it's, it, becomes, it becomes a relationship. And as it is for, for Yamar and Annette and for me and my wife and, and you who, who are taking this class because you're in preparation to get married or have recently gotten married, uh, that relationship grows the more intimate it becomes. And, and, and when I speak of intimacy, I don't speak of intimacy the way the world speaks. I, I speak of intimacy in, in, in how we look at one another, how, we, how without words we can speak to each other. Uh, couples who, who are on the same wavelength, uh, who are in that connection, can often uh, read each other's mind or what the other person is going to say because they're so well connected, and and uh, and so in the in in all relationships, we we are free to do uh, what we we may feel we're free to do, but our freedom ends in how it affects the person that we're with, and so it's limited by the person that we're with, the person that we don't want to hurt. And Ten Commandments take us to that personal relationship with God. Uh, God himself gives us these Ten Commandments. And uh, and then, of course, you know what what, what we did. Uh, we went ahead and multiplied those times 600 and made 613 out of, out of those 10. And and, and when, when Jesus was asked, which one is the most important? Because there were so many that it was hard for them to, to be able not only to remember them. In fact, I, I, I guarantee you that if I was to ask anybody here, give me the Ten Commandments, uh, a, all of a sudden the Zoom, the digital uh, connection would, would fade away, right? And, oh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Deacon. Uh, because... It's it's a reality that a lot of times, unless we are we are going in through through them on a daily basis and recognizing, and that's and it's one of the things that that uh, we want to be able to get into the habit of is at the end of the day uh, before before we uh, before we go to bed uh, to reflect on our day and 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 go over these these 10 commandments and, and, and see in what ways you, you could have, you could have avoided this and, and, and in what ways I could have done that. Uh, and, and so you, you start to tally up these, these, these uh, moments where we didn't live up to, to, to being, uh, to being faithful to God. And, and so, when we when we look at the Ten Commandments, it's it's when the rubber hits the road. Uh, you know, we, we we can we can take this course, um, we can get the certificate, we 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 can become anointed at confirmation or baptized 
uh, at the Easter Vigil. But it, it's 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 all intended to be to be a step further. It's supposed to be to create this relationship with with uh, with God Himself. And, and in fact, years ago, the the Baltimore uh, Catechism used to have this phrase that says uh, that uh, the intent the intent of of God's creation of man was so that man would know him, man would love him, and man would serve him. And serve him not as a slave, because Jesus says, I don't know, I no longer call you slaves, I call you friends, because you know what I'm trying to try to do. And so what what God is trying to do is to bring us home and, and so that we may be with him for all eternity. And and so these are the things that in order in order to be part of this kingdom, and, and the kingdom doesn't have an address, all right? The kingdom is a way of life, uh, uh, a way that you dedicate to uh, and commit to living, okay? And so these are these 10 rules, and, and the rules are command us what to do and what not to do in each and every one of these 10. And they're not, they're not a... Uh, a buffet table where you can pick and choose. I'm going to do one and two, skip three, and I'm going to do four and five, and then go back to nine. No, this is not a buffet table. You, We all have to follow each and every one of them. And, and one of the things that you're going to realize is that as we become uh, faithful to, to these 10, you become more aware of, of God in your life. And the more aware you become of God in your life, the more attentive you are to these these moments where we're tempted and we fall into these vices that that make trigger us into sin, and so one of the things that I've discovered and and for me it's an incredibly wonderful experience to be able to have these classes because as as I have these classes and and and, and we go over these these. Uh, these Ten Commandments, every year, I, I, I'm a, I become more attuned and, and more aware of things in my past that I, I says, man, I did that. And I, I don't know whether or not I ever, I ever confessed that. And, and so because we become, we, be, we begin to see God not, not in, a, in, a fog, in a foggy way, but actually he becomes clear to us. And by, by him becoming clear, who we are and what we've done also becomes clear to us. Now, remember the sacrament of reconciliation. Whatever, whatever is forgiven in confession is forgotten. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so it's important that you realize that you may think you're unique. It, 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 you're not. Right? It, we, we've all been there. I mean, we've had, we've had our moments of weakness. Our moments where uh, we're ashamed of, of what we we have done, uh, and 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 God doesn't want us to live like that. Don't carry that cross. Uh, he he told uh, he told uh, Saint Jerome as as uh, in his latter years when when he went back to Jerusalem after he had he had translated the entire Bible from Greek from I me mean, from. From Hebrew to Greek, from uh, uh, from Greek to Latin, he did the whole Bible, and and so we have the Bible today because Jerome translated it so that it would be the book that everyone would be able to read, and 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 he found himself in the cave where Jesus was born, and he says that he had this 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 vision uh, that baby Jesus appeared to him, and. Uh, and, and, and baby Jesus asked him, he says, Jerome, you haven't given me everything. And, and Jerome had, was known uh, not, as a, <laughs> not as a really nice guy. He always was on the edge. In fact, a lot of people who write about him said that he had a, <laughs> he had a lousy temper. And uh, he'd, go off the, uh, he'd go off the deep in, no in, in, in a minute's time. And, and so... Uh, I can only imagine in his vision, seeing this little baby Jesus telling him, you haven't given me everything. He said, what do you mean? I haven't given you everything. 
my whole life I've, I've dedicated to you. And the, and the little baby says, no, you haven't given me everything. Give me more. And he says, well, I'm broke. I don't have a penny to my name. I, everything I've given to the poor. He says, but Jerome, give me more. And then Jerome really flies off the deep end and he says, what more could you possibly want? I have nothing more that I could possibly give you. And then the, the, the little boy in the vision says, give me your sins, Jerome. Give me your sins. And, and, and you know, a lot of times God speaks to us in that same way. There, there is only one sin that can never be forgiven. Okay? And, and it's important that you know that. It's the sin against the Holy Spirit, okay? And that means that the sin that you refuse to confess is the only sin that can never be forgiven. And so it's important that you realize that they are all, they are all uh, forgivable because God's mercy is that great. Remember, we're here. We're here today in Miami and Florida and, and who knows what other state is watching us now. But this is only this is only temporary. This is not this 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 uh you know, I don't know if you guys remember, right? And uh and 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 when I used to when we used to watch TV and right in the middle of a program, every once in a while the numbers will come around and a little thing will be going around and says, This is a test. And the next one, right? This is a test. The test. And and that is that is that is our life in this world. It's it's a test. It's a test. It's a it's a preparation for the world to come. Okay. So I'm going to 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 tell. We're going to go over now the Ten Commandments. I will go over uh, some of the things that the commandment is trying to to teach us as is, as the church teaches it, uh, and the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay. Uh, and I, but I caution you, okay. If if something if something hits you, uh, in no way, in no way, am, am I passing any kind of judgment? In no way am I am I um, is the intent to to make anybody feel worse. Uh, in fact, it's just the opposite. Okay. So as we discuss this, and if you have any questions. Please, this is this is the time to get away from this. Uh, um, from uh, uh, I can't see your face, so I don't know who. You know, when we come to when we come to confirmation, I'm going to see a lot of faces that I've never seen because all I see is a <laughs> ball and, a, and, a, and an oval ball, and that's all I've seen for an entire year. Uh, so I uh, and I'm not speaking uh, to everyone because uh, Yamar and Annette and and now today we have a, 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 another person that I can actually see a face. Thank you so much. Uh, but the intent is so that we see each other. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to hear. I don't want to know any sins. I don't want to know none of that. Because remember, a deacon can't give you absolution. He can hear them, but he can't, he can't give you absolution. That we got to go to a priest, okay? So we're going to start now. With the Ten Commandments, and I don't know how far we're going to get, but we're going to start today and to try to explain them. Okay, our first commandment. Okay, it's got a long name in, in English. In Spanish, I learned that it was simple. Right. In Spanish, it's love God above all things. Amar a Dios sobre todas las cosas. Okay. That was how I learned it, okay? But then you come to America, and then English-speak people, they have a long name for that first commandment. And it says, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have any strange gods before me, okay? I am the Lord your God. You shall not have any strange gods before me. Okay, and so I'm going to use the simpler version, shorter version. Uh, okay, love God above all things. Yeah. 
This commandment commands us to be faithful. To God. You know, when, I don't, I don't know how many of you may have seen uh, the movie, uh, The Ten Commandments, with, uh, yeah, it used to be every year that we would look forward to, to watching this, and always around, around uh, Lent or before Easter, they would always play it on a Sunday, right, and they, they build it up, uh, just like they're building up the Super Bowl for this coming Sunday. They would say, oh, the Ten Commandments are, uh, are going to be on. And it's a great movie. Um, one of the things that you see in that movie is when Moses, when Moses leads the people out of Egypt. And, and so you get to see all that Moses had to go through to be able to get the people of Israel out of Egypt from slavery and bring them into freedom. And so and there's, a lot, of, there's a, a, a lot of symbolism in, in the way that it happened, in the way that we practice. Uh, Moses brings the people of uh, the, the slaves uh, from Egypt who have been praying to, to God to don't, don't, don't forget us. Don't forget us. Bring us freedom. Get us out of this bondage, right? Because they were slaves to the pharaohs. And, and so God sends Moses to, uh, in fact, he sent Moses and Aaron because Moses had a, you know, in, in, the, in the movie, you don't see this, but Moses had a speech impediment. Uh, he, he really couldn't speak very well. So I can only imagine he was a, uh, I, I don't, I, the person who repeats everything, da, 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 da. It, that was his impediment. So, you can only imagine God sending this guy to talk to the Pharaoh to let his people go, right? And, and so God realized that he also needed some help. So he, he sent Aaron with him. So Moses and Aaron go to Egypt to get the people. And of course, uh, the Pharaoh does not want to let the, he doesn't want to let his, his slaves go free. And so he, he, he says no. And then God and through Moses, uh, brings down a bunch of curses on Egypt until eventually uh, the angel of death uh, comes over Egypt and the firstborn of every creation uh, is slaughtered and, and dies one evening except for those who, from Israel who had put the blood of the lamb on their on their um, on their doorposts right so it, it once again, the symbols, right? Uh, the blood of the Lamb. Uh, we see it on the on the on the cross when God sheds His last bit of, of blood uh, for for us, and so we are saved because of His blood. The lambs were slaughtered, and and their blood protected the homes of the slaves of Israel, and from the angel of death going through them. So. The angel of death would always get to the door. He would see the, the blood on the door. He would skip that house and go to the next. And, and so it, 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 was a, it was a catastrophe. And, and so the Pharaoh realizes he's, he's over his head. He, he, can't, he, can't, uh, he can't fight this God anymore. So he lets the people go. You guys go. And so Moses and, and, uh, and, and the Jews and the Hebrews, they leave Egypt and... They, they go into the desert. And then the, uh, the king realizes, hey, you know what? I'm, being, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a laughing stock and, and I lost my son and uh, that, that's it. I'm going to kill them all. And so he sends out his entire army to kill every one of them. Now he doesn't want them to come back as slaves anymore. Kill them all in the desert. And so they realize that the soldiers are coming. They start to walk faster. And they get to the edge of the Red Sea and they can't get across. And so behind them, here comes the army. And in front of them, they're certain to drown if they jump in the water. And so Moses goes up into the mountain and uh, prays to God. And, and God tells him, I'll spread your arms and, and you will walk 
through the Red Sea. And so he goes up and he spreads his arms and the ocean splits and the people of Israel walk through it. They walk through the waters, come out on the other side and the army that was chasing them follows them into the river and as soon as the last Jew comes out of the out of the uh, out of the water, the waters return to their normal height, and everybody, the whole entire army, is drowned. And so they they're able to gain their freedom by going through the waters of the Red Sea. And when we're baptized, we go through the waters, the holy water that washes mm -hmm. us completely. And then we are we are reborn again to a new life. We're no longer who we used to be. We now become a new version of ourselves to begin again, right? And so this is what happens. And and um, uh, no issues on my on my, on my okay. And and so Moses goes up to the mountain after they get to the other side to see what else. God wants of him. Now, where do we go now? Because this is new land. We don't know which way to go. We're going north. We're going south. We're going to turn left. We're going to go straight or what? And so when he goes up to the mountain, the people who stayed behind, not everybody that fled was, was on board with the program. And, and so they, they start picking up... Uh, the gold that some of them had smuggled out of uh, out of Egypt, and they build a ca a calf, right, a cow, and they consider this cow a holy cow, and they start to adore this cow as their new god, and so the people, even though they have been they have been taken away from Egypt to become a new version of themselves, now decide. We're going to go back to what we used to be like in the new land. And so when Moses comes down, he sees them praising their God, the, this, this materialistic God that they have built, this golden calf. And, and so here comes, here comes certain death to a lot of the people who decided not to change their ways. And so Moses goes ahead and throws down the tablets. And we're going to have to fix things here, right? And so this is the first commandment. Moses, and God had given Moses the ten, the ten Commandments in a tablet. He actually wrote the tablets. He would later give them another, another set. Uh, the first set was destroyed when, he, when Moses comes down from the, uh, from the mountain. But... This, this was, they were already, they were already living in a, in, in, in a sinful life because they were already worshiping a golden calf, their, their new God in the new land. And, and so God tells them, and, and I think it's important that we realize that our God is a jealous God and not jealous in a way that, that he's uh, violent. No, he's jealous in a way that he doesn't want to lose us. He doesn't want to lose us. And so he reminds us, love God above all things. You will have no other gods but me. And we, we, and we got to get that straight. And so the intent, and, and, and it's not going to happen, and it's not going to happen by April, and it's not going to happen by June. This is a, pro a process where we... We begin to know God. We begin to love God. We begin to serve God. And in that process, we realize that there is no God other than our God. There is no one else that deserves, that deserves my time, my energy, my, my, my dedication, but God. If I didn't know, and, and you know, I tell this to my daughters all the time. He says, if I didn't know this to be true, I would never tell you that it is. But this is it. Love God above all things. You know, when, 
when that, that poor man, that poor young man, or, or the rich man is poor because of the way he goes away, but the rich man who comes to see Jesus and, and he says, what do I need to do to be part of the kingdom? And Jesus says, oh, you got to keep the commandments. And the young man says, all right, I keep them. I've been keeping them since I was a child. He says, okay, then you only have one thing left to do. He says, what's that? He says, go home. Sell all you have, give it to the poor, and come follow me. And it says that the young man went away sad because he could not, he could not do away with the things he had. And so when Jesus says, come to me, and, and see, it, 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 we have to be free to do that. We, we can't be tied down by material things because if, if we are, then it's going to be difficult for us to see God above those things it, because we are tied to the boat or we're tied to the car or we're tied to the house or we're tied to whatever in your life is your God to you. Now, I, I've always, I've always said I've had three loves in my life, God, family, and baseball. Those are my three loves. I, <laughs> That's it. Now, I I got to be honest. They weren't always in that order. Okay? They weren't always in that order. That's 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 why I I I prayed today and I and, and I and I thank God, right? That he was patient enough for me to get it right, right? Because I now know that God is first, the family second and baseball is third. It wasn't always like that. Okay. So this is this is what we want to make sure we remember. In all things, God is above all things. He's got to be the He's got to be the focal point. Whenever you're going to make a decision, whenever you're going to make a, a take a, take a moment in your life where it becomes a, a critical moment in your life, the first thing we got to think of is God. God has always got to be the first thing. And, and you're going to realize in the way you speak, in the way you speak, in the way you behave, people will know. People will know who is, and, and, and my pen just died. Uh, people will know who God is in your life. Okay? Hang on one second. I need a new pen. Ay. All right. Ciao, Ruby. We'll get you. We'll get you some food after the class. I promise. All right. <clears throat> I'm hoping that this one works. All right. All right. Now, God commands us to be faithful to God. That's the commandment. Okay. That's the commandment. In, in, uh, in, in what we're forbidden to do. Okay. Because every commandment has a command. And something that forbids from us, okay? And that's this is the this is the yes and this is the no of this commandment. Now, what is God? What it what is and who is God in your life? And so we are we are told not to fall into the same trap of the people who left Egypt, right? They idolat idolatry, okay, where we where we worship idols, okay, and and once again, I want to make sure that I give you enough ammunition because when you go tell this to somebody who's not of the faith, the first thing they're going to come back to you with, you're Catholic, and you guys don't worship idols, man. I went to your I went to your temple, man. You guys have all kinds of statues all over the place. You guys worship idols, okay. And it's important that you realize that, that you explain to them what those statues are, are there for. They're to remind us of individuals who we, who we honor in their way that they loved God, they lived for God, and died for God. That is the reason why we have them there. Not because we worship any of them. In fact, 
We don't even pray to any of them. We ask them, we ask them to intercede for us in a particular need. Okay? We don't, we don't pray. We don't pray. Hey, uh, Padre Pio, I need a big miracle. Father Pio can make a miracle. Father Pio can take your need and take it and pray with you in as an intercessor to God so that God may grant you the miracle that you may be hoping for. Okay? So it's important that we realize that idolatry is when we have the golden calf. When we when we have uh uh, santeria and brujeria. Those are adultery. That is not the God that we serve, the God that we love. Okay? So, uh, horoscopes. You can get caught up in that nonsense and, and, and it's hard to see God through that. And so, we're told, stay away from that because nothing good is going to come from that. You're going to get hooked. In fact, I was having this conversation with Yamar on Sunday. You know, we have a we have a faith that that walks us in love, and then you have some of these other other types of of uh, religions that try to control you through fear. God says, "No, I love you. I want nothing but the best from you. Stay away from that nonsense." Because all you're going to happen is you're going to find a dead end street. Come home. Come home and recognize that I am the God. I am the creator. I'm the one who dreamed you into an existence. Why would you go to any other God? Okay? So, love God above all things. Okay? Now, our second commandment is... Don't take the Lord and name in vain. You know when, and, and, and I and I think they still do this. I, I haven't been in court in a long time, but. People used to used to go and take the stand. They used to, the uh, the uh, the gentleman there would walk up to him with the, with the Bible and and with El ratio right hand. And you tell you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. And the people would say yes, and then they would take the stand. Well, the intent was that you wouldn't you'd be made aware that if you lied. You took the Lord's name in vain. The sad part is that in today's world, nobody knows this. Nobody cares about this. And so all they're trying to do is get out of the mess that they got themselves into. And I'll say whatever I need to say to get out of my mess. And you forget that you're committing a mortal sin because you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. So help you God not to remember. No. So help you God. That if you lie, you're going to have to really depend on mercy big time. Okay? And so, to, to, uh, to not take the Lord's name in vain is to recognize that every time we mention the name of God, it's in a way that builds him up, that gives him praise, uh, that, that gives him recognition for who he is in our life. Uh, when, we, when we decide to say, oh, uh, we catch our finger and we slam the door closed and our finger was still on the door jam. And the first word out of your mouth is, God! And you take it from there. It may not be a full mortal sin, but you thought of it. And that was the first thing that came out of your mouth is because we still haven't gotten to understand that every time we mention the Lord's name, is to give him praise and to recognize his the importance his importance in my life. When when we do the baptisms and, and it's one of the uh, it, it's one of the questions that we ask the, the, the parents and godparents 
and this is for the children. Now it's not, not it, it's not going to happen with you adults, but it, it, it happens with the children. And I always ask, I always ask the parents because it's part of the ritual. Okay. Uh, are you aware of the responsibility you're undertaking to teach and live the faith to your child? The parents have to say, I do. And I repeat that question three times during the ceremony because it is so important that we as parents recognize the, the seriousness of the role that we are, are about to take. If this child is going to come to know Christ, it will be because I witnessed Christ to him. If this child is void from being able to know Christ, it's because I have lied. I said yes, but yet I never saw the inside of a church again until somebody else invited me for a wedding. I failed here. I lied. Right? And so we have to be aware that when we say, I do, in anything to do with the church, all we say, I do with God's help. That way you enter into a partnership. You enter into a relationship in, in humility, asking God to help you fulfill that which you have promised so that you don't take the Lord's name in vain. A lot of us don't understand that or, or realize that we've done that in the past. We said, yes, I promise. I swear by God, I promise I'll do that. And then you don't do it. Woo -ah. Here you go. Here you go. Never swear in God's name. Every time you ever use the Lord's name, let it be to praise him, to worship him. And to be thankful to him. It's the only time we should use the Lord's name. In spite of how many times you hear. Oh, how is it? How is it? Uh, oh, my. Oh, my. Uh, OMG. Oh, well, OMG. Oh, <laughs> OMG. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't want to hear no OMG. Look here. Find something else to say. All right. <laughs> Again, you're thinking of God in a way that is not to give him praise. Okay? And so the command here is to is to remember remember the reverence that the Lord's name demands. And what it forbids is for us to ridicule that name. Okay? In fact, in the uh, in the Old Testament, the uh, the Jews used to call God, Yahweh. They could never write. In fact, you can go back to old scripture. You never saw the full name Yahweh written. Because they thought that if they wrote the entire name, they were taking his name in vain. They, they weren't worthy to write his name or say his name. And so Yahweh, when you see it written in the old, old uh, uh scripture uh, roles that we have found it's always missing a vowel or a letter because it was never written completely as Yahweh because they didn't want to take the Lord's name in vain okay they took it that serious okay so that's the second any questions guys just please stop me because otherwise you know me I I, I keep talking I, I talk in my sleep for crying out loud <laughs> Our third commandment. Uh, let me see how they say it in English. Uh, keep the Sabbath holy. This is an important one. Okay. This is an important one. This calls us to go to Mass every Sunday. 
Sabbath in the days when when the the the, uh, the stones were given to the people of Israel, it was the Sabbath, and the Sabbath, el sábado, Sabbath, was the seventh day, and the intent was that on the seventh day, God, on the seventh day, God rested. And we were to do the same thing. Now, when Jesus resurrects on Sunday, Easter Sunday, right? We Christians get away from the Sabbath, the, the Sabbath, the Saturday, and we rest on Sunday, which is the day of the resurrection. So from then on, Every Sunday became the holy day for us Christians because we celebrate the resurrection of Christ on Sunday. Okay, so then the seventh day for us becomes Sunday, not Saturday. Okay, so they would come from Sunday, Sunday becoming the first day of the week, then Monday the second. But for us, Monday becomes the first day of the week, and then the seventh ends up being Sunday because it's the day that the Lord resurrected. And so it's the day we celebrate because it is the day that we, we who believe that if God resurrected himself after death, that we will also follow in that, in, in his footsteps. Okay. And we celebrate the seventh, the seventh day, which is Sunday. Now, What happens here, and, and this is this is uh, remember the three the three things that are that are crucial to a mortal sin. You got to know that what you're doing is wrong. Great, it's it's serious. You have to be free to choose it, and you have to be willing to do it. Okay, if you meet those three credentials, then this is a mortal sin that can only be forgiven in confession. If you're on your way to work, on your way to mass, you get a flat tire and you miss mass. You didn't do it on purpose. It just happened. Okay? So it was not a mortal sin. But now, you wake up in the morning and you see, man, the sun is out. Boy, this is going to be a wonderful day on the beach. And instead of Instead of uh, going to Corpus Christi, you decide, I'm going. I'm going to Miami Beach, and you head down there. And so you choose to neglect the, the creator of the beach and satisfy yourself in the beach. Now, there's nothing wrong with going to the beach, okay? As long as you go to Mass on Sunday, whether or not you catch a 7 o'clock Mass, you can do that. That's perfectly fine, Okay. But the important thing is that on Sunday, you make time for God because it's the day of rest, okay? Now, rest could be, for us nowadays, rest is going to the, going to the mall and shopping, right? But that's, that's you know, it is what it is. Uh, it, it's, it's a day that you should just do something that you're not doing all the time. In my line of work, uh, I'm an air, I, 40, 43, 43 years air conditioner mechanic, okay? I worked my way up from a driver all the way up to vice president of the company where I'm at. Now, my trade required a lot of times that I work on Sundays because it was the only day that the building was closed and I had to work on Sunday because that was the day that I had to work. But now, here are the options. If you go to the Saturday Vigil Mass. After five o'clock, after five o'clock on Saturday, every Mass that's celebrated is the Mass for Sunday. So if you know you got to work Sunday, you can go to Saturday Mass and fulfill the obligation. Now, that word obligation 
doesn't always fit nice. Because at the end of the day, what, what you should really be feeling is, if I don't go to Saturday Mass, if I don't go to Sunday Mass, my day just doesn't seem the same. That's a wonderful thing to recognize. The sad thing is when you don't go to Saturday Mass or Sunday Mass and you feel no difference. That's sad. Okay? And we go to Saturday Vigil Mass after five because we follow the calendar of the Jews. The Jews, when the sun goes down, the next day begins already. So for them, as soon as the sun comes down, it's now Sunday. Okay? So for us, when the sun goes down on Saturday, then we celebrate the Sunday Mass on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we just continue the same Masses that you would have heard Saturday on Sunday. Okay? And it allows you the flexibility. Okay? Now, there are, there are circumstances where you don't have this flexibility. In your heart, you have to desire. You have to desire that you, that you be free to worship and be faithful to God to give him the day that he's asking for you to come. Okay? There was a young man many years ago who, um, who took a class. And he, the whole, every, every time we prayed the rosary, yeah, he, was, uh, he was working in a bank that uh, he had to work on Sundays. And every time we prayed the rosary, his intention was that the Lord would give him a job, find him a job or a position where he could come to Mass on Sundays. That he'd get him out of where he was at so that he could be free to come to Mass on Sundays. I think a week or two before we, we had the last class, he got promoted to a job where he was going to be free to work on, to be able to come to Mass on Sundays. And you should have seen the joy on this young man's face because that, that was the one thing that he, he prayed for. And so, once again, if, if you, in your, in your heart, you're in a situation where, man, I want to be able to go to Mass on Sunday. And, I, and, and for us to, to come together for a whole entire year, and I have this desire, something's missing. Something's missing. And, 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 and you know, we going to Mass is not optional. Okay? And it's important that we know that. Uh, and, and, I, and I tell you that, in all honesty, for many years, I went to Mass. And, and I went just because I knew that the Lord wanted to see me there. But not because I wanted to be there. But I was, God allowed me the perseverance to be persistent. And, and now today, I, you know, I, 9 o'clock Mass, and then we do the 11 o'clock Mass, and then sometimes I'm asked to go to the 12.30 Mass. It doesn't, it doesn't phase me anymore because I have found the joy that I didn't have, the understanding, the, 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 the ability to recognize the Eucharist, the, the Thanksgiving that it's, that is the mass that I didn't know. I didn't know when I was younger, but I didn't give up. I pushed through and I pushed through until eventually one day the Holy Spirit uh, enlightened me and, 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 and it all makes sense to me. But remember that when we choose, when we choose not to go to mass, it's a mortal sin. And now, you know, so if you haven't done it before on purpose and you do it now, now you know. Now you know it's great. Now you know that you're, you're supposed to be in attendance because God has called us to be there. Okay? Now, the first three commandments, the, the Ten Commandments are divided into three sections. A lot of people, there are some people who will tell you, no, only two. No, there's three. There's three sections. The first three, well, I said one, two, and three, which we just we just did, okay? And we have the fourth. And then from five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, they're divided 
in this way. From five to 10, they have to do with man on man, okay? With man, with man. The first three is man and God, right? Love God above all things. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. And keep the Sabbath holy. Our relationship, man and God. As we will see from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. They have to do with our relationship with each other. Our relationship with each other. But the one in the middle here. Okay. And it's a crucial one. Honor. Your mother. And father. This is so important, especially for you who are preparing for marriage. Those of you who don't have kids yet, please remember this one. Because if we, as a society... Neglect the fourth commandment, the responsibility of it. It will affect the relationship of our children, of ourselves, with God, and with man. If we as mother and father learn to honor God and teach that to our children, our children will know God. If we as mother and father honor our neighbor, right, man on man, our children will learn to honor man. If we as mothers and fathers teach the respect that is required of God, our children will learn to respect God. If we teach it, for, them, for our children to respect their elders, to respect their neighbor, they will learn to respect. But here's the sad part, that we have parents who have failed to teach this. And now we have children, they don't respect God, and they don't, definitely don't respect man. They live in a lawless society. They don't, they do whatever feels right, and they do it as often as they need to because they were never taught by their mother and father. And obviously then it comes back to them because their children will never honor them because they never saw mom and dad honor their mom and dad. And so it becomes an incredible circle. And so that's why this fourth commandment here in the middle is crucial. It's crucial to society. Because if the children don't see us caring for mom and dad, they will never care for you when you get older. If our children don't, don't see us do what's right by God or do what's right by man, where are they going to learn it? It's here in this commandment. It's where we learn. It's where society goes. And, and this is family. This fourth commandment is all about family. And so God doesn't call us to, to neglect our parents. Even if they neglected us. Okay? And this is this is one of those one of those commandments where you're walking on eggshells because uh you know, one of the things that I've learned at Corpus Christi through all these years, you know, when when uh, I've been I've been taking care of the air conditioning at Corpus Christi since 1982. Okay, now I've been in that neighborhood 
since 1979. And one of the things that I've seen, I've seen the highs and I've seen the lows, and I see now that uh, that well, the wavy line is getting a little closer, but it's still going up and down. One of the things that that you, I used to say was when I would see these gangs and all these kids that, that it was destruction and 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 uh, and they would they would steal the ladies' purses when they were coming to church and 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 they would do all kinds of things that 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 were not they were not kind to 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 their fellow man. I would often catch myself saying, "Man, poor." <laughs> Poor parents with these kids. Poor parents with these kids. Yeah. 35, 40 years later. I've yeah. seen more in that neighborhood than many, many would, will be able to, to know. But I know enough now. In fact, I'll tell you a st quick story. There is uh, two brothers who were in their... The oldest brother was 18. The youngest brother was 17. And they didn't want to take the class, the, uh, the RCIA class, with, uh, with the kids on Saturdays. They wanted to take it uh, with me. And, and there were no other adults. So it was just us. These kids went, came early every time there was a class. And they left late because they were so eager to want to learn about God. The day we do a rehearsal um, of what was going to happen, how they were going to be baptized, the youngest brother says to me, he says, Tony, do, do I have to do all the sacraments today? Or can I just like leave some of it for some other time? And I'm going, why would you want to do that? Listen, we don't have to do anything. God gives you that freedom. If you don't feel it in your heart to want to go through with this, stand back. Stand back and, and we'll come back whenever you whenever you feel the calling to want to become a little closer and a little, a little uh, feel the warmth of God a little more. And he says, I, I don't know. And so he says, think about it. Go home. Pray on it. And if you show up tonight, then I know you want to go through with it. If you don't, no worries. We'll, 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 I'll get a hold of you somehow and, and we'll, we'll talk this out. When he leaves, the older brother stays behind. And, 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 uh, and I ask him, what's going on, man? This is, you guys have put so much energy into this. So you've given so much of your time. Obviously, God wants this to happen, but what's, what changed? He says, Deacon Tony, my mom went to see a witch doctor, a brujero, and they put a curse on my brother so that he wouldn't receive the sacraments. And he's afraid of what may happen if he, if he receives the sacrament. And I'm going, wow. So years later, I now realize, you know, the kid did come back, okay? He, he went through it. Uh, he, he went ahead and, and received the sacraments. But what should have been a day of so much joy his mother, of all people, destroyed the joy that that day could have could have had even more so by throwing this fear on him. And I realize that it's not the poor children, uh, the the parents who are poor with children like this. It's the poor children who have parents like that. They don't have a choice. They don't have a chance. And, and, and it saddens me when, when I recognize that reality because I've seen it in so many cases because I've been there, I'm still there, and I see it. And so when, 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 when we fail here, society pays the price. Society pays the price because we didn't teach it here. We didn't teach it here. And so do we want to change the world? Absolutely, and I hope you do too. And one of the reasons why I'm here is because I want to do a little bit of it, and if I can, to try to make this world a little better. But we're all gonna, we're gonna have to go back to the beginning, and it starts here. And that's why it's important for 
for those of you who are taking the classes be, uh, before you get married or before you have children, know the importance of this fourth commandment. To honor your mother and father, even if they don't deserve it, find a way to, to, to be loving to them, not to, not to be, uh, not to be uh, hold any grudges. And maybe sometimes mom and dad weren't the best of mom and dad, right? And, but then again, you look back and who was their example? Where, where did the bridge blow up? And, and, and so just remember that God doesn't call us to judge. He calls us to, to love. And, and uh, you know, get over, get, over, over the, get over the pain and ask God to help you with that pain. And honor your mom and dad so that if you have children, your children can see you doing that. Nothing better than for you to be able to care for an elderly person and have your children watch that. Have your children see that. Go to Mass, bring the children with you, even if they don't want to come. You tell them, I need you to be there for me because I feel lonely. Find a way around it. Make them feel like they're doing something with it. They will learn from you. But if we fail here, none of this. And, and we're, gonna, we're not going to do it today, but come next week, you're going to see none of this can ever take place. None of this. If this fails, this is the bridge. This is what bridges God to man. It's the fourth commandment because there we learn love, we learn respect, and we love and, and we learn to recognize authority. If we don't learn it here, we ain't going to learn it anywhere else. And it's, it, it, it's not going to happen in school, it's not part of the curriculum. Yeah. And so, this is serious stuff because not only is it going to affect us in the in the world to come, it's going to affect us in the world that we live in now. The world that we live in now. Everybody always wants, everybody has this desire to do what's right and what's good. The, the unfortunate part is that sometimes we don't have the tools because nobody, nobody, not a mom, not a dad, not anybody stepped up to teach but should have been taught in the fourth commandment. Okay? So we'll discuss the rest of these next week. And I, I thank you for your time. And uh, this is this is good stuff. And, and if you have any questions, please just write them down. And before we next week, we can go ahead and, uh, and go over that. Okay? The please. Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you. My name is Father. And I love you. Deacon, yes, sir. before you leave, uh -huh. the sun has gone down already. Oh, oh, what a white guy! What and a we have to say this, everyone. So we want to sing to you happy birthday before oh. we leave. So I want everyone to unmute their, their Zoom really quick. Right. And let's sing happy birthday to the Deacon. All right, that's awesome. All right. Okay, so on three, one, two, and three. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, guys. God bless Bye, you guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs>